Welcome to the first video for Introduction to Programming and Numerical Analysis. This is the course webpage uh, where you can find all the relevant information about the course. To get started, the first thing you need to do is to install a couple of programs. Under Guides, there's a page called Installation, uh, where there is a step-by-step -step manual for how to do this. You basically need to install uh, three different programs. You need to in install Anaconda, which is a Python distribution. You need to install Git, which is a version control system for downloading and uploading files. And you need to install VS Code, which is an editor where we will run the Python uh, code in. Uh, this step-by-step uh, -step manual makes you install the programs and choose the settings that we need in this course. So pre please follow it closely. If you haven't already done this, you should pause the video and do it. Uh, and once that's done, we can continue. The next thing you need to do is you need to uh, download the course content. So there's a guide on, uh, under Guides called Git, which tells you how to do that. For now, we only need the first part of this, which tells you how to download course content. To do that, you need to open VS Code. You need to press Ctrl Shift P to open the command control palette. You need to write Git colon clone, and then you need to have the link to the lectures repository. And this is the link that I will be copying in now. So I'm copying this and I'm opening my VS Code. This is my VS Code. It might look different from yours. That, depending on, that depends on a lot of uh, settings, so don't worry too much about that. I press Control shift p I write git colon clone, I press Enter, and I paste in the link to the lectures repository. I press Enter again, and it asks me where do I want to put this repository, and I'm choosing the documents. And I say select that as my repository destination. It's downloading the repository, and now it's there, and it's telling me do I want to open it in a new window, or do I want to add it to my workspace. I already have a workspace, so I'm adding it adding it to that. Now we can see that out here on the left hand side, all the files for the lectures are, are in there. This will change as, as, as the course is, is developed, so don't worry if it doesn't look, look exactly as, as what I'm having. The first thing, the only thing we need to have today is the zero introduction folder. Specifically, we need to open the file introduction.ipyynb, uh, which is on Jupyter Notebook. So let's open that. So now we have this, this one uh, open. What you have done is you have basically uh, downloaded course content with Git, uh, and, and you can later uh, update that as, uh, as well. As I said, this one might look a bit different from what you, your screen uh, does, but don't worry about that. Later you will also learn how to actually use Git to upload files, but that's, that's for later. This VS Code program is what we also call an integrated development environment, where you can in principle run many different languages in. We will only use Python. The main window here, that's what we call the editor. That's where the, the text and, and, and the code is. And what we have on the left sidebar uh, is the explorer. The file we just opened with the extension I, pi, uh, uh, IP, Y, and B is Jupyter Notebooks where there can be text and code. There's also something called .py, which are Python code files, which we will look at later in this video. Then there's a PDF file and there's a Luke file, but we don't care about them right now. You don't need to learn a lot more about via, via VS Code for now, um, but if there's something you need to do and you don't know exactly how, it's always good to press Control shift p open up the command control palette, and try to search for what you want to do. Let's say you want to change the theme, the color theme, you write theme, and you can say there's something called preferences colon color theme. You can press enter there. And now there's a list of various theme, themes and you can press the up and down arrow to choose which kind of theme do you want to. I prefer the light uh, plus, so let's, let's stick with that. What we have opened here is a Jupyter notebook. Uh, and what Jupyter no notebooks are, are a combination of text and code. So the first cell I'm having here is a text cell, or more precisely, a markdown cell. If I press Enter, then I go into edit mode for the cell, and you can sort of see the markdown uh, uh, code that's underneath the, the cell. I can always go out of edit mode by pressing uh, the escape uh, uh, button. 
So now I'm back in, in command mode. Uh, and I can uh, go forward by uh, either running the cell by pressing Control Enter. That's just a text cell, so nothing is actually happening. Or I can press Shift Enter, which runs the cell and advance. And therefore, I get to the next cell. In Markdown, you can do various kinds of things. You can write uh, in bold or italics. You can write lists. You can write la LaTeX math. There's a, a link here to a guide which tells you how to do that. But of course, this course is a lot more about the code cells than about the text cells. So let's look at our first code cell. So this is our first code cell. Lines in a code cell which start with a hash is a comment. So that's basically just text in a code cell. Uh, but all our lines are actual code. So this defines a variable a and set it equal to 20. It defines a variable b and set it equal to 30. And it defines a variable c and make it, makes it a sum of these two variables, and then we will be printing out the results. As you know, we can run the cell by pressing Control Enter, and the first time we do that, it needs to set up a kernel. That takes a short amount of time, and then it's actually running the code, and we get out the results here, which is 50. Actually, the result was already there before, uh, which can sometimes be a bit confusing. So sometimes you might want to start by going above the notebook and press clear outputs of all cells, and then all the output disappears. So now when we actually run the cell, we, we get the output out for the first time, uh, uh, more, more or less. Now let's continue. We can press shift enter, it runs the cell, and we go back to we go forward to the next uh, to the next cell. This is just a text cell that's boring, so we continue. And let's continue even more. And uh, now we get the results of our, of, of the new uh, cell here. So this is basically how it's done. A small task for you is to create a new cell uh, where I want to have the code E equals D star star 2 and run it. So try to discover what star star 2 uh, actually uh, means. So you should do that uh, by yourself. So pause the video and do it. And afterwards, I will tell you uh, how to do it. The first thing you need to do is to create a new cell. And the guide below here just tells you that you can press B when you are in command mode, and it will create a new cell. You can go into the cell by pressing Enter, and we can write the code. And let's say we want to print out the value of E as well, and now we have uh, what we need. So let's uh, run this cell, and we get out the result 10, 10,000. D had the value of 100, so this just means that we want that we are squaring 100 and then we get 10,000 out. Let's say you instead uh, wanted a markdown cell. What you do is you create a new, a new cell, then you press M, and then you have a markdown cell and you can write something interesting. You might also want to delete that again, so just press DD and you can delete the cells in this way. Okay, let's now talk about something with a bit more economics in it. So let us consider the consumer problem from microeconomics, where we have a consumer which uh, face some prices for the first good and the second good and have some income. These are all positive numbers. Then the consumer choose how much to consume of the first good and the second good and get utility according to a Doppler's function. The total expenditure for the consumer can, must be less than or equal to the income. So that's the constraint. Let's say we now want to solve this uh, with a numerical optimizer. Uh, what do we need to do? First thing we need to do is we need to define the parameters. So in this cell here, I'm defining what the value of alpha, the cop doctor's parameter is. I'm defining the value of income and of the prices. So now those are set in stone. I might forget later on what I actually set uh, set these values to. But I can always press variables above the notebook and then you will get a list of all the variables that, that you have and their, their value. So for example, alpha is a half. Let's close this down again. Okay, so now we have the, the, the values of the parameters. So let's actually define the consumer objective. We do that by defining a function. The way to define a function in Python is you write def, then you write the function name, then you write the input, and then you write a colon. And then the inside of the function is indented uh, with uh, four spaces or just a tab. 
and you return here exactly the value of the uh, utility function. So that's the utility function. We also define a value of choice function, which is a function only of how much you consume of the first goods and then the preference and income and price parameters. What I'm using here is that we know that all income not spent on the first good is spent on the second good. So what you choose of the second good must be income minus what you spend on the first good divided by the price of the second good. And then we value the utility and we return that. When I evaluate this cell, nothing seems to happen. There's no output. So what this cell is doing is that it is uh, defining some functions that we can use later. So now we need to do the actual optimization. Here, the good thing about a program like Python is that somebody else has thought, thought about that and written a way to do the optimization. So what we will use is that we will use uh, the SciPy uh, library and we will use the module called Optimize. What that actually is, is doing is that it's minimizing. Uh, so I'm creating an objective function, which is, this is just another way to define a function, saying that we want this function to be a function of only x1 and then we want it to be minus the value of choice function that I defined above. Uh, so this is the objective that we want to, uh, uh, to minimize and thereby we are optimizing uh, uh, the utility. Uh, and the optimize module have a, have a simple way of doing that. There's a function called minimize scalar, uh, which simply does minimization of scalar functions of one variable. It needs to know the objective function and then you can specify various other parameters. So I'm putting in the objective function and I'm putting in some bounds, which here is that you can only consume between zero and, and uh, the income divided by the price. So either you consume nothing of the first good or you only consume the second good. This will produce a solution and this solution will have a dot fun part, which will be the function value. I take a minus of that and then, then we're back to utility. It will have an X dot x where you get how much you consume of the first good and then we can calculate how much you consume of the second good and we can print out the result. So that went rather quickly. We just got the we, we sold out. You consume five of, of the of the first good, two and a half of the second, and you get some utility. Now this was of course only for one set of parameters, but we can very quickly go up. Let's say we double the income and then we can run our our uh, uh, cells again and we get our new result out. Let's say you want to do this for a more general uh, utility function. You might want to do uh, the uh, CS utility function that I've written uh, here. Um, but that's a task uh, for you to begin with. So pause the video and try to see whether you can actually solve the consumer problem with this CS utility function. I will tell you how, how, how it is done afterwards, but it's always good to, to think a bit for yourself first. The solution I would do is something very similar to what I've just did. I will define the parameters. Here I'm choosing a beta value that's very close to zero, which means that it's actually very close to being a doctor's function. I will define the utility um, for, for CES. Here I'm doing something uh, a bit more complicated. I'm saying that I will only evaluate it if all uh, um, inputs are above zero, otherwise I will return zero. Then I will, in the same way, create my value of choice for CES. I will create the objective. I will uh, call the minimize scalar function and I will take out the, um, the, uh, uh, the results in the same way as before. And I will print it here. And we can see that we get something very similar to before because the beta is so close to zero. While if we put in a number that's further away from zero, you can see that the results changes. Okay, so for very few lines of code, we can do something that's rather complicated to do uh, uh, by hand. Uh, this can take some time by, 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 by hand. Um, but of course, we're also using something that we really don't know what is this minimized scalar stuff. But the good thing is you can also do this in a much more simple way. So you can also just use a brute force grid search. So let's tell you what that is. For doing that, I will be importing the, the NumPy package, which is numerical uh, Python, and will imp import that as, as, in p, uh, as, as np. And then I will create some vectors, 
using this lint space function. The lint space function, you can sort of hover over it and you can see that it will return evenly spaced numbers over a specified interval. So here between 0 and 10, and it will uh, create 100 numbers. So we can just run this code and then we'll have created these variables. If you're a bit unsure about how that actually looks, we can open the variable stuff and we can look into the x1 vec. We can double click here and we can see exactly what is in this variable. It's numbers between 0 and, and 10. So everything is as it should be. Let us close this down again and let us close down the variables view. So now the simple idea is simply that we start by not knowing anything. So we say that our best value for x1 and x2, that's simply just not a number called nan. And we say that the best value for, for utility, that's, uh, that's minus infinity. We haven't seen anything that, that, that gives us uh, anything else yet. Then we just loop through all possibilities for x1 and x2. We see whether it's actually the case that, uh, that what we have of expenditures is less than or equal to the income. Uh, if it is, then this is allowed and we are, we are evaluating utility. Uh, and, we, and if that utility is better than what we have seen yet, then we update that. Uh, and we also update what the best value of x1 and x2 is. So if we run this, we get something that's sort of in the ballpark of what we had before. Um, it's, it's, it's rather close. So just a small note on the code here. Note that whenever I do something here, I am doing a for loop here. Then the next thing I'm doing is indented. And then the next thing is indented. Um, and there's always sort of colons at the ends uh, uh, of, these, uh, of these lines. So that's the structure of how uh, Python is, is, is built up. But, but you will learn more about that, uh, that later. But actually, as I said, we didn't get exactly the right result. So we can compare now the utility we got here with the utility uh, that we got with the numerical optimizer before. And we can see that we get something that, that's smaller. So a small task for you is whether you can think about a way to improve this brute force uh, solution. Uh, so pause the video and try that out. What I would suggest doing is simply making more fine vectors. So instead of 100 points in each vector, let's do 1,000 points in each, in each vector. And let's run the code again. And we can see that we still get something that, that's lower, but now it's a much, uh, much closer. So we might even continue here, right? We might say, okay, let's put in 10,000. 10, and let's run this. Now we will get very close. We hope. But actually we face a problem here, because now we're doing things 10,000 times times 10,000 10, times. This is a lot of times. And you can see here that it's running. It's taking a lot of seconds to complete. And yeah, we don't want to wait for this. This is a problem with brute force stuff. It can take too, too long time. So I just press interrupt uh, above the, the notebook here and it stops whatever it's, it's, it's doing. So let, let, let's go back to, uh, to 100 and, and let's run the code again. So it at least produces, produces uh, something. Uh, so there are limits to what you can do without knowing some more detailed numerical uh, stuff, uh, but you can't get going just with the, with the brute force. Okay, the final thing I want to tell you is a bit about using modules. So what is a module? A module is simply just a .py file uh, with functions you can import and then call in the notebook. So let's try to open the mymodule.py file here. And you can see that this is containing a file. It's called uh, myfunction. It takes in the x and it returns the square of this x. So if you go back to the notebook, then we can import my module and we can say that x should be equal to 5 and then we can call my module dot my function on this x value and it will return it in the y value and we can print that. Okay, so that was 5 squared, that's 25. Everything is working. If you want quickly to go to where my function is, you can go uh, add it with the cursor and then you can press F12 and then it jumps directly uh, to the my function and you can you can see exactly what, what it does. Okay, but let's go back to the notebook. The final task I want you to consider whether you can you can solve is, is that you should create a new module, my new module.py with a function you choose and call from this notebook. Uh, uh, let's see whether you can uh, do uh, that. Um, and afterwards, I will I will tell you how uh, I would.
do it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a new uh, code cell here. So this new code cell, you will need to import some stuff. And actually, I will be importing my new module. Oh, I need to write it correctly here. And uh, now I wrote this wrong. I should have not have that in there. And then I say, let's put x equal to 5. Let's say that y should be my new module. And let's say I create a function called add. And this takes in the x. And then I want to print the y. OK, so this is, this is the code I want to run in my notebook. But now I need to create this at all uh, to get this to work. So I need to create a new file. How do I do, do that? If you don't uh, know, then as I said, it's always the idea that you should um, that you should just uh, press Control Shift uh, P, and then you will get up a, a list of uh, of, uh, of things that you can do here, and you can search for what you will be want want to do. You can press New File, uh, you can write in New New File, and you can say I want to create a new file, and you can choose the a Python file here and it will open up a new file. I can define my add function here as a function of x and I will return x plus 1 and I can press Control S to save this file and I wanted to call it my new module.py and now I've saved it so now I should be able when I am out in the introduction notebook to run uh, this uh, this cell and you can see that it that it runs it takes five and add one and it returns a six so uh, everything is is good uh, here that was all uh, for today i hope you will uh, enjoy the rest of the course